Good morning all. Today we are going to discuss what will happen when a DC shunt motor is connected to AC and why practically AC shunt motors are not possible. So before starting this, let us first see how the DC shunt motor works, then how, what is the torque equation for the DC shunt motor, then we will see what are the effects when it is connected to AC and why it is not feasible. So let us start with this. So if you take a DC shunt motor, DC shunt motor we have seen the connection, the DC shunt motor can be represented like this there will be a field. So whatever the current you are giving IL, this is a letter resume, this is my voltage. So out of this, the armature current will pass. There is a field current. This field current is limited. So to limit the field current, it is made up of more turns of thin wire. Why this is used? This is used for limiting the field current. So because of that, the motor will start running. The advantage of DC shunt motor is it is just equivalent to the induction motor. So the thing is the speed will remain constant throughout the load. The speed will almost remain the constant. These are called as constant speed motors. The dropping between the no load to full load is very less. So constantly we can just assume that they are the constant speed prime overs. So that is a major advantage of DC shunt motors. That's why in practically whenever you use the DC motor under normal loads, we go for DC shunt motor only, except in the loads where we need very high starting torque. Only for example, traction only. So let us proceed further. So this I can represent in this magnetic field form. This is my magnetic field axis. So if you are taking this as the magnetic field axis, your armature is here. Your armature is here. Your armature, so let us assume this is my field axis. So 5F. This is my field axis. Either you can keep off words or you keep the lower words, whatever you do. So here, the brushes are always kept in the quadrature axis. Quadrature axis means the axis that is perpendicular to your field axis. 90 degrees lagging behind your field axis. To this field axis, we will connect it. Let us assume I am making the connection like this. This is my armature. This armature is connected like this. This is connected to my supply. Out of the supply, the field current will pass here and this is my armature current. That armature current is entering like this. So whenever the armature current enters like this, let us assume there are conductors. Conductors are kept like this. So in this through the conductors, so the current will pass. So let us assume I want to produce the clockwise direction. So in order to produce the clockwise direction, you can apply your Fleming's left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule, this is my direction of IF or 5F. And I have to keep my direction of the current in such a way because I want my direction of rotation should be in clockwise direction or the conductor which is here, this should experience a torque in this direction. So to get it, automatically the direction of current should be away from us or it should be cross which is under this pole. So it will be cross here. So let us take it as dot. So I have taken the dot. Because of this the torque is produced, the torque will be produced like this. So here you can see the current it is entering from here and it is distributed gradually in all these forms or otherwise the magnetic axis because of this the magnetic axis will be this will be my magnetic axis. So if you apply the magnetic axis your magnetic axis will come like this. Sorry this will be the magnetic axis you can apply your right hand thumb rule. So I have just displayed here. So this will be my field because of the armature phi a. So phi a is lagging behind phi f by 90 degrees always this phi a will try to catch the phi f so it will start rotating in the direction so in that way the torque will be produced so we can analyze in this way so i hope this is clear to you so now the torque equation we have derived in the dc machine the torque is equal to 1 by 2 pi into phi into z is the number of conductors p is the number of poles and a is the number of parallel paths into current passing through the conductor so this we have taken as ia this we have taken as IA. So now practically instead of DC, if I am connecting to AC, what will be the equation? So all the equations will remain same, only little change will be there. Whenever this is connected to AC, because AC, the current is not constant, the current will be continuously fluctuating like this. So whenever it is fluctuating, whatever the values are there, it becomes instantaneous values. So torque becomes instantaneous value. This will be equal to 1 by 2 pi. This phi becomes phi instantaneous value into Z into P by A into this i also becomes the instantaneous value. So this is instantaneous value. So from this we have to calculate what is the value of the average value. So whenever it is connected to AC, let us see what are the consequences. So then we will proceed further. So whenever this motor is connected to AC, the first thing is related to the field. So the field has more turns. So whenever the turns are increased, so automatically the reactance of this field is increased. 
when the reactance is increased because in the case of dc only resistance of the field is there but here along with the resistance the along with the resistance the reactance also adding so when the resistance plus reactance is adding so because we know that zf is equal to rf plus j times of xf so this value is increased drastically so if this value is increased so automatically my field current will decrease drastically so when the field current is decreased so automatically the flux becomes less so in the torque equation if the flux is decreased the magnitude of the flux is decreased so automatically your torque will decrease so this gives rise to decrease in the value of torque this is my first effect so let us see the second effect the second effect is as this field coil is pure inductive so automatically if you are taking your supply voltage as a reference with respect to your supply voltage your field current the current that is passing through the field will lag behind the voltage by nearly 90 degrees so this angle will be nearly equal to 90 degrees some resistance effect will be there because of that there will be little bit shift from the 90 degrees so i am approximating as it is will approach nearly equal to the 90 degrees because turns are more the inductance will dominate the resistance so i am taking it as 90 degrees so this is for the case of field now coming to the armature generally the armature is made up of the thick conductor and that number of turns or the inductance will be less when compared to that of the reactance of your field so automatically as the reactance is less for your armature conductors so this current that is passing through the armature let us assume this is my armature current it is lagging by some angle some angle phi so now this angle difference between these two this angle will be equal to 90 minus phi so let us see what will happen to the torque equation and what are the effect because of this we can write that instantaneous torque equation for this as 1 by 2 pi into the instantaneous value of flux instantaneous value so we have to multiply with z into p by a instantaneous value of current or otherwise i can write my instantaneous value of current as z p by 2 pi a into instantaneous flux into instantaneous current so to make the analysis easy let us take the current as my reference so if i am taking current as my reference you can see if is lagging behind the current so let us assume this angle lag i am representing this 90 minus phi i am representing with an angle of theta theta is the angle difference between ia and if because of if only phi f is coming so this becomes zp by 2 pi a this phi i can write as phi maximum into sine of omega t minus theta and i i can write as i maximum sin omega t so this current i am taking as reference to make the calculation easy so instantaneous value of this one will be equal to z p by 2 phi a into phi maximum into i maximum into sin of omega t minus theta into sin omega t this is the instantaneous value so from this instantaneous value i can calculate my value of the average torque because we have to always consider the average torque so this becomes 1 by pi integration from 0 to pi so this becomes 1 by 2 pi a 1 by 2 pi a into zp into phi maximum into i maximum into sin of omega t into sin of omega t minus theta okay this is what we get so this becomes d omega t so this becomes 1 by pi integration from 0 to pi 1 by 2 pi a into z p into phi maximum into i maximum so this i can write as 1 by 2 times of cos a minus b minus cos a plus b so this becomes cos a minus b becomes cos omega t minus this one cos theta minus cos a plus b cos a plus b becomes 2 omega t minus theta into d omega t this is what is there so now you have to do the integration whenever you do the integration because this is having the double frequency component so automatically this average term will become equal to zero if anyone want the complete derivation of this you can refer to my basic electrical engineering where i have discussed for the case of rl load rl load how to calculate the power you can please refer to their power in the rl load circuits so so this final result i am just writing this finally if you calculate you will get it as 1 by 2 root 2 into pi into z p by a into phi maximum into <coughs> i maximum by root 2 into cos theta 
because this will become like 2 is there, 2 is there, 4. That 4 I am dividing into root 2 and root 2. Because always we always represent with the RMS value because that's why I want to write in that form. So 1 by 2 root 2 pi into ZP by A into 5 maximum into I is the IRMS value. So IRMS value into cos theta. So we can tell that this entire term is some constant. So constant multiplied by maximum value of the flux produced by your field into RMS value of the current into cos theta. So this is my average value of the torque. So let us go to the DC shunt machine once again. So in the DC shunt machine we have already seen when it is connected to AC the maximum value of the flux will decrease because the reactance is dominating the resistance. So this value is decreased. And second one, cos of the angle between these two. Because you can see cos of the angle between these two, that angle is approaching near to the 90 degrees. So when this angle is approaching near to the 90 degrees, so cos of 90 will become 0. Or even if it is less than 90, generally this value is also very less. So from this we can conclude that the average torque is very less for the case of DC shunt machine when it is connected to AC. Because this torque will be so much less that machine cannot run. Though practically this is not feasible. That is the main reason why DC shunt machines are not used in AC or practically AC shunt machines are not possible. AC shunt machines are not used. This is the first consequence. And second consequence is whenever you are going and using in AC, there is one more EMF that will be produced. That EMF is called as the transformer EMF. What is this transformer EMF? Let us try to summarize this because this will be useful in the coming classes. So the transformer EMF, again, this is my field axis. This is my armature axis. We kept your brushes. So brushes are connected like this. So this is given your supply. So this gives your I, this becomes your IF. So let us assume that IA is not there because you are giving the AC supply to this IF because I, IF is sinusoidally varying. So whenever it is sinusoidally varying, this produces the sinusoidal flux. So this sinusoidal flux will link with your armature conductors and this armature conductors EMF will be induced that is called as the transformer EMF or statically induced EMF. So we always know that the statically EMF induced will always try to oppose the cause. As per the Linguist law, that means the statically induced EMF should produce the field which is exactly opposite to the main field flux. So let us assume the main field flux direction is this one. So this is my direction of the main field flux. Main field flux. So now whatever the armature conductors are there, they have to carry the current because of transformer EMF in such a direction. They should oppose the cause. They should oppose the cause means that flux produced by this armature EMF because of the transformer action should be in opposite direction. So when this will come? You can apply your right hand thumb rule. So this is possible. Your thumb will indicate downwards. Then your curled finger should indicate like this. Or otherwise here in this side it should be cross. It should go inside. And this side it should be dot. This side whatever conductors are there it is dot. And this side it will be cross like this. So that automatically the field that is produced will be like this. This is my field produced because of transformer action. Because of the armatures. So Whenever the current is passing like this, you can see here, so this I am trying to redraw here. So the current direction is coming like this because of the transformer action. So star, star, star. So this will be dot. So whenever it is having like this, you can see here, these all are adding to each other. Again, these all are adding to each other. So automatically, this will be your field axis. See, this is field of transformer, transformer field. So at this point, the voltage will be zero. And at this point, the voltage will be maximum. So along this axis, this voltage will be maximum. So because of this, what happens? At your brush axis, wherever you kept the brush, actually this transformer EMF that is induced will be maximum along the brush axis. Will be maximum along the brush axis. So that is the reason because of this, because of what your brushes are doing, brushes are short circuiting the adjacent coils. They are having the maximum EMF. Because of this, the short circuit happens. And because of that, there will be drastic sparking will happen at your brushes and your brushes will also damage. So this is a second effect also when you are using a DC machine for the AC. So you will get doubt why voltage is maximum like this. This you can understand even from the transformer action. In the transformer we have seen that if this is my flux, the EMF induced will be lagging behind this flux by 90 degrees. So this is my EMF that is induced. So same way this is my field axis. So automatically the EMF axis will lag this by 90 degrees. So that is the reason that EMF that is induced because of the transformer action will be along the breast axis or the quadrature axis. So because of that, the short circuit happens and heavy sparking happens. So we have to eliminate this also. 
So we have to suppress the value of the transformer flux. So that is also a very difficult task. This is used for the case of AC series motors, the compensation and other things. Those things we will see in detail in AC series motors. So I hope these concepts are basically concepts are clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. So thank you. Thank you very much.